Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. I'm your host, Chaz Andres, and as always, we're going to get started this week with the news. The biggest story of the week? Well, actually, there were two. First of all, Mythic Championship 2 happened in London over the weekend, the first ever modern Mythic Championship. And second, of course, War of the Spark was released on both Arena and Magic Online. Let's talk about the Mythic Championship first. Now, normally a modern event of this size and caliber would cause spikes across the board, both individual top performers from the event and the entire modern index as a whole. Instead, that didn't really happen. In fact, on MTGO, the entire modern index is down fairly significantly, and in Paper Magic, I can't find more than a handful of top performers. There just weren't any spikes this weekend. So, what happened? Honestly, I think Modern Horizons is largely to blame for this lack of spikes. See, usually after these events, people want to buy into one of the top decks because they know it's going to be relevant for a long time to come. But with Modern Horizons only six or seven weeks away, nobody wants to get locked into, you know, a deck that's going to be obsolete in a couple of months. Plus, who knows what's going to be viable then? Everybody has these fun rogue decks they want to test out and nobody wants to buy into, you know, a deck we already know about, especially with such a significant price investment, before we see what is going to be available to us once Modern Horizons hit shelves. Also, the Mythic Championship didn't really change our understanding of the modern metagame. In fact, the top five decks on day two of the Mythic Championship were the same as the top five most popular decks on day one of the Mythic Championship, which were the same as the top five most popular decks in Modern, according to MTG Goldfish. So, yes, there are some things that happened. For example, Tron was really popular because the deck gained a boost thanks to the London Mulligan, but overall there weren't any, like, major surprises. This wasn't like that one Pro Tour where the Eldrazi took over, anything like that. It was fairly business as usual. So, if that's why Modern prices didn't really spike this week, why did they drop on MTGO? In large part, that's because this was War of the Sparks release weekend on MTGO, and people are really hyped for this set. I know people don't play a ton of standard on MTGO, but they're playing this set, and honestly, when any set comes out on MTGO, what we end up seeing is a lot of drops in price for established cards, because people pretty much sell whatever expensive cards they're holding onto that they're not using in order to buy into the latest hotness. And since War of the Spark is so, so hyped, this set is no exception. Now, as we do look at War of the Spark, it's worth remembering that set redemption is going to keep prices at least somewhat high. For example, I don't think there's any chance this set drops below, say, the 150 ticket mark until after it passes out of the set redemption window. Right now, a complete paper set of War of the Spark is selling on eBay for about $200. On MTGO, a complete digital set is selling for about $220. So there is a shot that War of the Spark will drop a bit on MTGO. It's got, you know, 20, 30, maybe 40 tickets to give, but that is the absolute bottom for this set right now until the paper set drops in price, which is not going to happen anytime soon. Let's move on now to gaining ground. We're in standard, the card that gained the most ground this week was God Eternal Kefnet out of War of the Spark. That card started selling about 10 tickets when War of the Spark first hit MTGO. It's up about 12 this week to 22. That makes it about 5 tickets more than Nickel Bolas, the second most expensive card in War of the Spark, and about twice as expensive as the new Liliana. Kefnan has actually started to pick up again in Paper Magic as well. After initially being hyped maybe a little too hard, it dropped down to a more reasonable price before starting to spike again over the last couple of days as it shows up in a couple of initial control and mid-range lists. Now, I'm still a little bit skeptical of this card, but at least one or two of the Mythics in War of the Spark are going to be very expensive on MTGO thanks to the quirky economics of Set Redemption. As long as Kefnet sees at least a little bit of play in Standard, and considering its price right now, it is a pretty good shot to be one of those cards. So as long as that play does actually pan out, Kefnet is going to continue rising in value. Meanwhile, over in Modern, the card that gained the most ground this week was Horizon Canopy, jumping about two tickets from 29 up to 31. And this caps off a nice couple of months of growth, considering that Horizon Canopy was down to about the 17 ticket mark in late February. 
Why is Horizon Canopy gaining ground when a lot of the cards in Modern had a really bad week? Well, it probably has something to do with humans' popularity at the Mythic Championship in London. After being on the downswing a little bit for a couple of months, thanks to the rise of Visit Phoenix, humans had a fairly good weekend overall. It was the third most popular deck in London, and three copies made the top eight. So as humans surges back into the forefront of the modern metagame, I would expect this card to continue, maybe gaining a little bit of ground, or at least being stable where it's at right now. Humans is definitely resurgent. Let's move on now to our biggest loser. We're in standard, it was Arclight Phoenix dropping about 7 tickets from 49 down to 42. And granted, a lot of this drop came because people are selling off their expensive modern card in order to buy into War of the Spark, but in this particular case, I think the drop might last a little bit longer. Most of these modern cards I think are going to rebound because that's what usually happens, but Arclight Phoenix is different because Guilds of Ravnica is only about a week away from its set redemption cutoff date, so there's a real shot this card is going to continue to drop as it passes out of that window. At any rate, I would hold off on buying back into this one for at least a couple of weeks until we see what effect set redemption has on the powerful Phoenix. Moving over to modern, the biggest loser of the week was actually Surgical Extraction. That card dropped 10 full tickets this week from 48 all the way down to 38, which is pretty weird and incongruous, and anyone who watched the Mythic Championship in London might be scratching their heads over this one. After all, Surgical Extraction was the most popular card in London by a wide margin, it was all over the place, it was very powerful, it is the key linchpin card in modern right now, so why did it drop in price? Again, like I said earlier, it's all about people selling their powerful extra cards in order to buy into War of the Spark. Unlike Arclight Phoenix, however, I think this one is going to rebound fairly quickly. It is a very powerful card and is going to end up back over 40 again soon. So this is a nice lull for anyone who wants to pick up their surgical extractions now. Now, the sneak of the week this week is a commander card called Aminatu the Fate Shifter. Aminatu was a two ticket card back in January. It was, you know, only available in treasure chests and nobody really plays commander on MTGO, so it was basically free. Now it is up to 14 tickets at Rising. Why? It's in large part thanks to a new legacy deck that runs three copies of Aminatu in the main, and if that deck catches on, this thing could be worth a lot more than 14 tickets. After all, treasure chest exclusive commander cards are among the scarcest on MTGO. I don't know if the deck has much game, but I would pay some attention because this one could gain a lot of ground from here on out. Or if the deck fizzles away, it won't. So keep your eye on this one, it could be a pretty big gainer in the near future. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Trader sales data over the past 7 days. And this gives us a great idea of which cards are actually selling the best right now, regardless of price increases or decreases. Looking at overall sales by volume, it's all cheap modern staples near the top of this list. For example, Path to Exile and Fatal Push are at the very top, which is not surprising, they're there a lot, but a little more surprising are the fact that Tormod's Crypt and Ghost Quarter are in the top 5, which hasn't been true for a while. Kermod's Crypt might be due to the fact that main deck graveyard removal has become more prevalent in the format. That was a thing in London thanks to the new mulligan and the fact that you know people's deck lists ahead of time. It's one of those things that can lead to more graveyard removal in the main deck, which you can just sort of put under your library during a mulligan in an irrelevant matchup. Ghost Quarter is even more interesting because it is one of the 10 or 15 most played cards in Modern right now, sort of snuck out of nowhere to be that, and both of these cards are cheap as free online, so it's possible they'll stay that way. A lot of cards that are this good and this ubiquitous are generally not worth much online if they're commons or uncommons, but it's also possible they're due for a price increase. So at the very least, if you don't have Tormod's Crypt or Ghost Quarter in your collection, you should pick up a couple of copies while they're almost free. Now, in terms of overall sales by price, there's been quite a bit of a shakeup since the last time we checked in. Arclight Phoenix has been number one on this list for a long time. It's now down to number five. It's below Jace the Mind Sculptor, Surgical Extraction, Scalding Tarn, and Horizon Canopy. And that is in large part because, you know, the card's price came down, so it would require more sales to be higher on this list. But also, this is another reason why I'm a little bit low on this card during the immediate future. 
As for the modern staples above it, now is a decent time to think about buying these cards. They're going to go up in price once Modern Horizons preview season begins, so definitely make sure you get them during this lull where people have been selling them due to War of the Spark as opposed to waiting until all that new modern hype begins and you realize, I don't know, you don't have Jaces or Surgical Extractions or whatever, so now is a decent window to buy in on those. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chaz Andres, and I will see you again next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.